Finding a route from one place to another with the shortest distance and time is something we do throughout our daily lives. Older days would have us finding this path manually by trial and error and sometimes just guessing that a path is shorter than the other. Since a computer started to grow powerful, pathfinding became an important application and many algorithms were developed to find the shortest path virtually. You may have heard of algorithms that go by the name of Digixtra, Breadth First Search, Depth First Search and many more. Of such, we have the ASTAR algorithm that has had huge success in this field. Let's understand just why. Hello everyone, this is Akash from Edureka and I welcome all of you to this interesting session on the ASTAR algorithm. Let's take a look at the topics we shall cover in today's session. We shall briefly discuss about search algorithms, talk about what makes ASTAR so special, go in depth with the ASTAR algorithm and finally end the session with a hands-on comparison between Digixtra and ASTAR. I hope that you are clear with the topics to be covered. Now before we get started, subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us on the trending technologies. Also, if you are looking for an online training certification on machine learning and artificial intelligence, check out the link in the description box below. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the first topic for today. What are search algorithms? Well, as the name suggests, they help us search for something, but what exactly? It is a route or a path that we can follow to reach our destination in the most optimal way possible. You would have heard about the traveling salesperson problem in some way or the other. The problem is basically that a salesperson needs to travel between various points in the city so that he can sell everything that he has, but he has to keep the cost of his traveling as less as possible. Before computers, all of this was manual and had a lot of time and monetary wastage, but now that is not the case. We have many algorithms that do the work for us. All we need to do is to feed them with maps or graphs. They process the data obtained through them and output the best possible path for traveling. So that is basically what a search algorithm is. We have many algorithms developed that could match every case, such as the Digixtra, the Breadth First Search and the Depth First Search. A star, A O star and so many more. This video focuses mainly on the A star algorithm because of its features. Let's now talk about it which is also a next topic. So what exactly is the A star algorithm? It is an advanced breadth first search algorithm that searches for shorter paths first rather than the longer paths. A star is optimal as well as a complete algorithm. What do I mean by optimal and complete? Optimal meaning that the ASTAR algorithm is sure to find the least cost path from the source to the destination and complete meaning that it is going to find all the paths that are available to us from the source to the destination. So that makes ASTAR the best algorithm, right? Well, in most cases, yes, but ASTAR is slow and also the space it requires is a lot as it saves all the possible paths that are available to us. This makes other faster algorithms have an upper hand over ASTAR but it is nevertheless one of the best algorithms out there. So why choose ASTAR over other faster algorithms? Let the graphs below answer that for you. I have taken the Digixtra and the ASTAR algorithm for comparison. You can see here that the Digixtra's algorithm finds all the paths that can be taken without finding or knowing which is the most optimal one for the problem that we are facing. This leads to the unoptimized working of the algorithm and unnecessary computations. ASTAR algorithm on the other hand finds the most optimal path that it can take from the source in reaching the destination. It knows which is the best path that it can take from its current state and how it needs to reach the destination. So now that you know why we choose ASTAR, let's understand a bit of theory about it as it is essential to help you understand how this algorithm works. ASTAR as we all know by now is used to find the most optimal path from a source to a destination. It optimizes the path by calculating the least distance from one node to the other. There is one formula that all of you need to remember as it is the heart and soul of this algorithm. F is equal to G plus H. Remember this by heart if you want to understand the algorithm properly. Let's understand what each of these parameters means and what makes them so important. F is the parameter of A star which is the sum of all the other parameters G and H and is the least cost from one node to the next node. This parameter 
is also responsible for helping us find the most optimal path from our source to the destination. G is the cost of moving from one node to the other node. This parameter changes for every node as we move up to find the most optimal path. H is the heuristic or an estimated part between the current node to the destination node. This cost is not the actual one but is in reality a guess cost that we can use to find which is the most optimal path between our source and the destination. So once you have understood this formula, let me show you a simple example to help you understand how this algorithm works. Suppose we have a small graph with the vertices S, A, B and E where S is the source and E is the destination. You have to also remember that the cost to enter the source and the destination is always going to be zero. That means the cost to enter S and the cost to enter E is always going to be zero, right? So the heuristic values are S is equal to 5, A is equal to 4, B is equal to 5 and E is equal to zero, okay? So let's use the formula and calculate the shortest path from the source to the destination now. F is equal to G plus H where G is the cost to travel and H is the heuristic value. So to reach the source F of S is equal to 0 plus 5 is equal to 5. That's simple enough to understand for now, right? So we have entered the source. Moving on, the paths from S are the other two vertices. So the cost of S to A is 1 plus 4 is equal to 5 and the cost for S to B is 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. So now S to A is the shortest path. So we choose S to A. Moving on from here, the paths from A and B to the destination will be calculated now. So the total for the path S A E comes up to 14 and the path for S B E comes up to 7. So what happens right now? We choose the path S B E as it is the shorter one. So after the calculation, we have found that B has given us the least path. So we change our least path to SBE and have reached our destination. That is how we use the formula to find the optimal path. So with having the example understood, I am pretty sure that you will be okay with the algorithm too. Let me just explain it now. Do not worry, it's simple words and it is easy to understand what is happening. You have two lists here which are the open and the closed lists. The open list is the node we are currently visiting and are on. The closed list over here is what we have not visited but will calculate as you know that A star is a complete algorithm. So let me just explain the algorithm for now. So we add the start node to the list, simple enough. So for all the neighboring nodes to that start node, we will find out which is the least cost of F, okay? So once we have done that, we switch over to the closed list. Now. For all the nodes that are adjacent to the current node that we are on, you have to find if there is a node which is reachable. If it is not reachable, you have to just ignore it. If a node is reachable, then check if it is on the open list. If it is not, move it to the open list and calculate F of G and H. Now, if a node is on the open list, make sure to check if that path is lesser than the path that we are currently on. If so, change over to that path. Now you stop working when you find the destination or you cannot find the destination going through all the possible points that are given to you in the graph or the map. Okay, so that is basically what the algorithm is and I hope it is really really easy to understand for you guys. So with that context explained, it will be easier to understand everything that we are going to do from now onwards. Okay, with the algorithm being done, let's move over to how A star is done practically I'll be showing you two algorithms, Dithextra and A star, which will help you understand where exactly some algorithms fail and how A star can be helpful in finding the path. Let's code. So as you can see here, this is the first algorithm, which is the Dithextra's algorithm and I have basically given it a maze over here. So let me just explain what's happening in this algorithm. So the algorithm basically takes all the points and maps it to infinity, okay? And then finds all the other lists that are really needed. And it makes sure that the distance to reach the source is zero, obviously, because if I am in Bangalore and I want to reach Bangalore, it'll always going to be zero, right? So let's do that. So next we have Q is equal to the list of range of N. So for all the, you know, number of uh, nodes that are available. So you make that. So while Q is equal to true, you have to just find out about the various paths between one node to the other node. So 
if a path is basically infinity, you just break, you just come out of the loop. Else you go through all the various possible nodes. Okay. And you check if there is a node. So as you can see here, so you are trying to find out a distance where there is an alternate path which is giving you a lesser distance, right? So for example, if I am at node one and I want to reach node three, there are two possible paths. I can go from node two or I can go directly from node one to node three, but I am currently at node two to node three. I'm taking that route right now and that is giving me a value of six. And if I go from one to three directly, it's just giving me a value of three. So basically I'm trying to find out all the possible paths that are available and then what I'm going to do is if there is any path which is you know alternate or which is much more lesser than what I'm currently on I'm going to move over to that path. Okay, so that's what this function is basically going to do and I just return the distance and you know the previous ones. So then I have another function which is basically just to you know display the solution accordingly and here yes. I have two mazes over here. So wherever you have a zero over here, right? So that means it is a travelable path means you can go through that path. But if there is a one over here, it basically means that it is an obstruction, meaning that I can go from here. I can go from here. I can go from here. I can go from here, but I cannot move ahead of here. Okay, so same thing over here. And as you can see in the last row, it is completely free. So that means I can move over from here. Okay. And this is also the same thing wherever I have zeros. I can travel through that and if it is a one I cannot travel through that. So what's happening over here is I am just going to you know give out the solution over here. So I have given one maze over here and I have given the other maze over here. So you will be able to find out the shortest path from here. So I have given one graph over here and I have given the other graph over here. So it will basically give me the shortest part between you know the nodes to reach one part to the other. So let me just run the program. So as you can see over here, this is the value that I had obtained for one particular graph and this is the you know path to travel from zero to five and then there is another path which is all infinities. So INF is basically all the infinite paths and it is telling me that it is not able to find it. It's because the list indexes is not in the way of an integer or a float. It is basically in INF formats and it is basically meaning that there is no path from this you know this node to the other node. So that is the reason I am getting this error actually. Okay. What's happening over here? Let me see what's it for. So whenever there was a graph right. So this is the graph. This is the input that I've given here. It had some of the other path because of which it was able to you know calculate to go from one part to the other. Whereas Digixtras failed for this one because it was not able to understand which part should I go through because all ones were over here and it had no idea how to go through it right. So that was the reason it failed for that particular graph and let me now show you how this is overcome when I use the a style algorithm. Okay. So basically I have the main function and I've given the same you know graph over here, but I'm using lists over here. I can even use tuple that will still give me the same answer and I have the starting path and I have the ending path and the same thing over here which I have done. So I hope you have understood the main function right here. So what I'm doing over here is I am basically creating a class node for which you know Basically, it's like I have G H and F and accordingly all the other parameters that are required for the A star. I have all of that in that and then these are all my open list close list all the you know initializations that I need to do first and then while I am in the open list. I am just going to find out for you know what are the basic elements that I can travel from one list to other other and make sure that it is on the open list or the close list you know according to the algorithm I've gone through over here and then if it is on the end node it basically means that I have reached my destination over here. So I am just going to append it and I'm going to return the path basically. So then I'm just checking if there is any other path. So this function over here right. So I'm just checking for a child node. So basically what this is meaning is that if from one node I'm able to find another position or another route which is much more smaller than what I'm currently on I will change over to that route. Okay, so that's what this function is basically for and then I'm just going to find out everything.
over here. So let me just uh, run the program. Yes. So as you can see, this was for the first graph that is path and then path one. So to reach from zero to zero comma zero to five comma five, it is using this path for one graph that is the path, and this is the second path, right? So it is zero zero one one two two three three four four five five. So you can understand that even though Digixtra has failed, Asta was able to accomplish that. Even though it has taken a bit more time and computations. It is able to find out the path from going to one place to the other, right? So that is the reason A star is such a good algorithm. But as you know, it is basically very, very slow. This is just a very small example. Think about it when it comes to you know huge, huge data sets and huge graphs and huge maps. It's really slow, but nevertheless, it is one of the best algorithms out there because it is able to give you the output properly. So you can see where Digixtra fails simply because it tries to find a path and it gets stuck in a loop and cannot identify how to come out of the problem. A star was able to do that, and that's a very practical example of where A star wins where other fails, right? So with that, we have come to the end of our session for today. I hope it was fun and exciting to learn about the A star algorithm. If there are any doubts, please leave a comment for us in the comment section below, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Till next time, take care and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!